Hey, I'm Thrand here. Hey, oh, this is Eldgrim. And, and this, this is the Thane Thrand Channel. Yo! Okay, this is our uh, medieval shop sword with no edge, but normally you would use blows kind of, you know, quarter speed, you know, hit certain areas and reenactment, not actual, and let it kind of give and go. So, yes, yeah, so with padding, you know, it's not going to hurt you. If you're wearing lots of armor and padding, then yes, the metal's going to absorb blows. But even then, you use some control. But what we're going to do is to see what would happen if somebody decided to throw a blow to an uncovered head and not just do something like that and be considered a kill because the guy didn't parry. He's going to see what happens. Oh! Oh, we knocked it off our pedestal here. I actually split it from the impact. Okay, now this is just an unsharpened sword with extreme blade heft. I mean, it's a heavy blade. And I hit full force and it shattered our coconut. It split it right down the middle. We don't have a cut. Normally we get cuts in our videos, but this was just uh, impact and force. We also have a head here with heavy ballistics gel. All right, I'm here with my famous brick setup. Uh, what we've got it set up like is it to be like a, cl a clavicle or a scapula type idea or where, the, where it all meets in the shoulder joint. Uh, and it's very hard to protect that. You could put padding over it. Early period when they wore a lot of mail and they got to where they were wearing not just Bjornis or, or Halberg, they were wearing uh, entire suits of mail covering almost every bone. But we don't have a lot of evidence whether they were actually using anything else to reinforce uh, forearms and legs until they started putting plate pieces on or hardened leather and so on. So early period we see a lot of those type cast blows. So what we're going to do is set this up today with our 40% uh, ballistics gelatin over our fake bone and an ideal setup to possibly break. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put over that our gambeson, which is actually a mantle here, with our uh, Bourget mantle with our uh, actual coif. Let me set that up here. We want to set that up ideally where it's covering the bone properly and we're going to test it and see if you can get any power through that because power is the issue here whether it's ever necessary to have power for any specific blows or anything to, to damage your opponent and I believe through mail it's possible to damage certain bones so let's see what happens here. Okay, I'll start off by testing a cut like he's describing uh, Arthurian historian He's saying control blade, so I'm assuming he means a good strong grip, uh, you're not going to overextend it, you're just going to cut with it. Which, of course, I could use the weight of this blade, because I'm used to throwing cast blow, and I could literally throw a cast blow in this situation, sharpening it, and get more power. But this would be a hacking or chopping or cutting technique, like he's trying to say is not used as much, because it, it can either get disarmed, or uh, you actually cannot redirect it. But I kind of beg to differ in certain situations where the power might be important, you're going to want full power. But let's say I am going to cut it like a screen style cut or something if I was going to come in and control it. And we'll see what it does to our, our rig here. Well, we got flesh damage, but didn't do anything to our brick. Would you, uh, would you call that bruising? I would say bruising, and since it was against a bone, I mean, you never know, it might, it might have damaged the skin some. You might have some rupturing in the skin where you have blood actually coming out of the hematoma. But I didn't see anything severe. We are now going to use the cast blow, and one of the things he said about it, uh, he said that it slides through the hand out like this. No, you'd wind up catching it like that. It is not a thrown blow like the spear or something where it slides in the hand. Now, we're going to start off, I'm holding it tightly back here. A lot like Matt Easton has said, where you hold tight back here and he kind of just holds it and lets the blade do what it wants to do. But, when you get full extension, what happens? The thumb tends to go to one side, you end up in Roland's idea or the handshake style grip. But it's only for a moment of time when you're actually casting the blow out to get the reach. But you're using the weight of the blade. I'm worried more about accelerating the blade on this than using my body and stepping in and cutting and pushing are pulling. I'm just going to use the weight of the sword and accelerate it, try to impact this and see what kind of uh, damage we can do. And I'm going to start off in this position, my hand's tight back here, but I'm actually going to let it uh, kind of rock back in my hand before I throw the blow to get the most amount of uh, force possible. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. <laughs> Fuck! I would say that uh, 
it did its job. Our flesh was torn all to heck, but I'm sure that's getting shoved into the brick. Still held up together pretty well. When well, you think about it, the flesh gets shoved into the bone too. If it even splintered or anything like that, it would do damage to the skin subcutaneously. Right, so we had the padding of our gambeson. We had our mail, which was mostly here for aesthetics. We didn't have a sharp blade. There's no need to. This is all blunt force trauma. And this is what ended up happening. We ended up enough force to still damage that. So the argument is the clavicle right here is set up to break, if you think about it. I know, yes, the shoulder can move and so on, but it's set up, it's just stretched across. There's lots of bones in the body in certain circumstances, if they have enough force going through them, not necessarily breaking them by hitting them and then giving, but them in a situation where they can't give, they'll, they'll break from the impact, just like the uh, brick did. So yes, I think under circumstances of mostly male and lots of gambeson, that the force of the blow did matter even from swords, and that's why you see the 13th century swords getting heavier and heavier until they decided that wasn't really the way to go. Let's go for niches. People are wearing lots of plates, not helping us much. Uh, we need to start trying to get in those niches and kill them that way. But when it was just lots of mail, and uh, especially cloth armor, like multiple layers of cloth, you could still injure the guy through the cloth even if you didn't get a slice and cut into it. But with a proper angle and force, more force cuts through more uh, material. That's why it works so well on tatami, or it cuts it cuts through uh, our rolled wet newspaper. There's only a certain way to cut through that and go clean through, especially with these thicker uh, blades. They're much thicker than what they use for tatami cutting. They use specific blades that are real thin to make it easier for them nowadays. So all in all, I would say that there is some uh, validity to using force when hitting certain areas of the body. Would you want to use it in every single blow? Probably not, but if it's some area where you can't hit any niches and you're pretty much throwing uh, blows like that, then yeah, you want to hit a shoulder, you want to hit a clavicle, you want to hit some ribs, you want to hit something, at least injure the guy or wind him. Maybe you get your niche after that and get him right in a nice opening when he's bent over or hunkered over or in pain or he just leaves the field. For we have our brick set up and this time not to break. It's not set up like in a martial arts demo with two pieces here in an optimal position like a clavicle or something if it was in the proper position to break. And what we're going to do is put our 20% ballistics gel over it which is very, very tough. It's about the thickness of flesh would be over bone. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put the gambeson that we used with our uh, bow test recently on top of it. And this stopped an actual 50 pound hunting bow with a bodkin point. So it's pretty good gambeson. Uh, I don't think you can cut through it easily. You might cut into it, but I doubt you'll cut clean through it. Uh, we're going to use a cast blow to see if this sword here can actually send any energy through it and damage the brick in any way. That's our whole idea at the moment. Oh! That was gnarly, dude! Let's see what it did to our With all that bounce, that thing bounced three inches off that platform. Uh, most and a human body don't bounce that much on and an we impact. we cut our gambeson, like as we assumed it would cut some. But we didn't cut all the way through our gambeson. We actually did not cut all the way through the gambeson. But the brick was still split from the transfer of energy and the flesh still split open. So that's telling me that even with padding and this and a sword that's a little under, I guess about three pounds, with a proper blow, uh, a cast blow, it could still be damaging to someone wearing multiple layers of gambeson or possibly even mail because we've done that already as well. The force carries through. Ah! Ooh, we got some chafing through there. That was a pretty good blow. I'll try to see if he's... He has a fracture. He didn't cut through his head like it would do normally, but he has a fracture. Ah! Him. Oh, he lost a lot of flesh. We're going to be able to see this in a minute. He has a fracture in the skull. I can feel it, but it's not all the way through. This man would be down, though, or dead, just from the impact. Ah! Oh, that did it. That did it. I'm seeing blood coming out of him. I'm seeing it here. We need to see what we did to it. That did it.
right, let's see what we got in here. Got our two uh, arming caps. Oh, apparently what we thought wasn't a lot is quite a bit. We cracked his skull with the other hits. This man was dead. The side blow to the side of the head, uh, I'm not so sure, but this here is definitely uh, a kill. And then we came in from over here and hit him, and that's when we saw the blood come out. And I'm going to be honest with you, uh, his neck is broken. The only thing that's holding it up is the gel. Actual bones in the neck are shattered. So this man did not survive without the helm. With the helm, he appeared to maybe be unconscious, knocked out, possibly from the uh, it's extreme blow, but without the actual top. Yeah, he's dead. This first blow over here did it. We just didn't realize it because I couldn't see underneath there to how bad. So I'm really impressed how well the mail held up and the padding was more than you would expect because we've seen what that sword can do without any type of protection at all. It would have clean through the head and just took the top off or clean through the head and left it laying on the ground. So I, I guarantee you without the top, it's still better than, than nothing. That was right into the rib cage in this area. Oh! The nail seems to be holding up well and stopping the edge. We're getting a lot of blunt trauma through it. Oh! So it feels like we're losing resistance under there. Oh! Just for good measure, come in on the other side and see what it all right, let's we'll check that out. If you look here, we have structural damage to this very hard uh, fiberglass structure. A human body wouldn't crack, but this shows how much force went through here. If it broke this, I'm seeing this as if the ribs were secure, it probably would have broke ribs. We've also got damage here that was not from anything else we did. It actually cracked the, the shell here as well. And I'm trying to see if there's any over here. We see some scarring on it. Oh, there's some crack. All right, we've got some very unusual damage here where what it's done is it's actually cut into the meat, like split it open. And I'm assuming that's from it shaping and conforming to the thing when it got hit that it actually tore apart in the impact. This is cracked right in here. It's hard to tell, but are you seeing the blood come through? We have a cracked rib. I can feel it right in here. Remember, these are not joined to a spine, so it's not exactly the same thing, but that that rib is, you can see the blood coming through now as I'm messing with it. That's from the mar marrow inside and it's busted. I can feel it, it's harder to see. Rest of them feel normal. Let's see what this blow did over here. Took the least damage overall, mostly just through the mail. Yeah, I think if they were joined to a spine, we might have had some broken bones. We had to definitely see bruising and, and damage or blood coming through that wouldn't have been there like in these areas. You can feel like the little pockets. I think they're cracked. That's exactly what it feels like. They're cracked. Not only through, but they're cracked. I guess where they were setting against the uh, hard surface when they impacted. I honestly think it would break ribs and I think that the impact would be probably, or through the mail, could be lethal to the wearer. That's why they were wearing stuff like this called plates. So over mail as they got larger weapons and pole arms.